Okay, here we are. Uh, it's me, Eric, uh, otherwise known as the DB, Devil Breaker, and I present to you two of my friends who have joined me in past commentaries. Rodrigo, though, he's not as much of a recent guest. What do you go by online? Well, hang on. First of all, uh, the one thing I should mention is that I was a, a part of your uh, Mega Man Legends playthrough that you still haven't released yet. <laughs> and uh, second of all, online, I go by Gak Losen. I thought it was Kazu no Haru. Oh, that? No, first of all, it's Kudosuna no Kazuo, and second of all, that's, like, email, but don't worry about all of that. Um, mm -hmm. Just so you know, um, I will be the person playing through this game right here. Total we are about to begin room. playing the entire Metroid Prime series on the Wii right now. Yep, the Metroid Prime Trilogy, which is still $100 at GameStop. Can you believe that? Oh, I can believe that there's nothing it's not in production. That's why. This is a collector's edition. This is a collector's edition. But didn't GameStop stock on, stock on in more? No, because the Nintendo's actually not making any more of uh, the disc versions of these. You can get it on uh, the Nintendo Network now on the, if, if you own a Wii U, so you can play it there. But that's, uh, that's about it. It's a good alternative for those who have a Wii U. I would say so. Yeah. Oh, all right then. And uh, Nieto, why don't you introduce yourself? Nah. <laughs> nah. What do you mean nah? Because I told you I don't know much about this. I'm just gonna give the side comments. Well, geez, just say hi. Let people know who you are. Let people don't know who I am. They haven't subscribed to my fucking channel. <laughs> Otherwise known as Emma Rukia. No, that's 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 the PSN name. My, mine's the mine's the. Uh... Mine's a, it's Nieto Bueno as the channel name. Yeah. Subscribe to Nieto Bueno and he will be nicer. Okay, I, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I probably won't be having that much commentary because I'm going to be the one playing and shooting the crap out of aliens. But, uh, um, giant yeah. brains. Well, the problem with this commentary is that I have a lot of questions and I think you've got the answer, so we're going to have to find a way to make this work. Well, if that's the case, then, um... Just, just speak. If, just if speak that's the case, again. then here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. Whenever you have those questions, just put the, just take the mic and put it up to my mouth, and uh, we'll, we'll do it. It should work that way. Yeah, I, I think it'll just work if you just speak, speak the way you regularly do. Whatever. Well, not only, yeah, but I don't want to speak too, too loud because uh, my mom's in the other room and she's just trying to relax. I don't want to be, I don't want her to come knocking on the door, you know. Yeah, okay. Alright, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna get started on playing the Metroid Prime Trilogy right now. The Devil Breaker will be your main commentator, I will be the player, and we've got Nieto over here making smart commentary. So, yeah, I've got a few guests with me. Uh, one, like, you might call Nieto a reluctant guest, but whatever. Uh, we're still gonna play the game and we're gonna have fun. I like that. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So, you said you had questions for me, uh, what's the first one? Why don't we recap how we got into this situation? You know, tell them about how you were reluctant to try playing the Prime Trilogy until you stumbled upon a certain idea. An idea you rejected at the very last moment. Because of what now? Please refresh my memory. Uh, I'll give you three... three... Is it three syllables or three words? Resident Evil 4. Oh dear God! That's why! That's yes. Okay, let me explain something to you. I have played Resident Evil 4 over 150 times. This is not an exaggeration. He's counted. I, 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 no, the game's counted for me. I died in Metroid Other M 26 times. Yeah, but my point is, is that I promised myself that if I was ever going to do a Let's Play, the very first game I would ever do is Resident Evil 4, because all I would do is complain about how many times I've played through that freaking game. But, against that, now I'm playing the Prime Trilogy. Exactly what made me change my mind is beyond me. Um, but the hang on, let me, let me give you a little bit of commentary here on the Prime Trilogy. You'll notice that the background is actually what the inside of Samus's arm cannon looks like. And, um, and, and I think that's pretty interesting. The one thing I don't like about the Prime Trilogy is that it doesn't have the intros of Metroid Primes 1 and 2. And, you know, Prime 3 really didn't have an intro like this, so it, it, that didn't bother me Metroid so much. Metroid Prime's intro 1 was actually more creepier than ever. Is well, it, was it like the this? one with that alien type of music? Yes. Yeah, I mean... That literally felt, that literally felt like some weird ass shit. I don't know. I, I just I, I I prefer it like that, and um, and yeah. So th so that's something you'll notice. You can have three separate slots for all three of the games, and you actually have to select the me. So I'm gonna go with uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with her because she looks just like Samus. Good call. Is this original music for the Prime Trilogy menu? Yep, yep, it is. You won't hear this in either Prime One, Prime Two, or Prime Three. Nice. And okay, so. 
like, please, just, just before I hit Metroid Prime, I need to know, what exactly was it that made me change my mind? Uh, you were gonna, oh, you're like, so, you're yeah, so, my, you're... what changed my mind to, so that, you know, instead of doing Resident Evil 4, now I'm doing this. The fact that you found the Prime Trilogy game disc. You found the case or the game disc? Oh, the fact that I had the game. Really? That's what oh. made me change my mind? Yeah, because you were, you were about to give up on it. You were like, we could always oh, try that. A, another game. Oh, that. No, okay. I thought I thought this was like an earlier conversation sort of thing. But oh. if this is something that happened like 10 minutes ago, then that's a, that's a different story. I, I, I was just going to say that he loves you. Okay. All right. Anyway, so let's get started. This is Metroid Prime. And I... Oh, wait. We can get... We can get hit veteran off the bat? Veteran is... Is the normal difficulty for Prime One? Uh, normal is actually like really, really freaking easy mode. Let's go to veteran. Then. And we're going to veteran. Sweet. So let's get started. This is Metroid Prime. Prime. All right. Um, minus a few uh, interruptions with trying to connect each cable and reconnecting it. We are doing just fine now that we have our setup. Uh, it is going to take probably less time than we spent connecting it to disconnect everything once we're through for the first session. Also, for those of you who still don't know, this game takes place directly after the first Metroid game in terms of the Metroid's chronological storyline. A lot of people have said this takes place after Super Metroid, but the fact that, uh, well, there's, there's a certain fact I'm going to point out when we get to it in the game that proves that this game actually does take place after the first Metroid, not Super Metroid. Would it have been better? Well, I don't know if it's too early to debate this, but should these games have taken place after Super Metroid? That's a good question, and honestly, I really can't say that for a fact, because, you know, we all know that Samus' main arch enemy has always been Mother Brain. You know, Mother Brain is always the one, you know, calling all the shots, making everyone feel miserable. But in this game, in this series, rather, Mother, uh, uh, Mother Brain really has no role in it. So, um, I, I, really, I really can't say. Anyway, so let's explain the story. Uh, Samus has received a distress beacon from this frigate called the Orphean. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought that was supposed to pop up as text in the, like, oh wait, there's no intro in this version. Exactly. Well, no, there is an intro, but let me explain You're what's going on. It. But let me explain what's going on. Samus receives this distress signal, and the thing about distress signals in the Metroid universe is that distress signals all sound the same whether they come from friend or foe. So basically, Samus is here to either back up her friends or kill her enemies if they're already bleeding on the floor. Kind of brutal if you ask me. But if you ask me, she is one sexy woman. Holy crap, just look at her. Holy crap, a strong female character who depends on herself for empowerment and answers to no one except for the bounty. We agreed not to talk about that game. Oh, oh, don't worry, we'll get to that one. Later. Much, much later. Dude. But now, yeah. let's get started. The amount of hate mail that you're just about to get. Right. Anyway. Did you know that uh, this game was actually supposed to have voice acting and they found an actress? Yes, they did, and she still manages to... She still plays the role of Samus, she just does the voice grunts and all that. Yeah, because the intro was supposed to have actual dialogue. What about other end? Let's not talk about that game, please. Yeah. Alright, now. Let's focus on the positives of the Metroid And let's start by series. talking about this game right here. So, first of all, Metroid Prime is the very first uh, 3D Metroid title to have ever been created. And, in my opinion, it is just drop-dead gorgeous. The game will start with an intro here that will tell you to lock on to your targets. If you're playing on the GameCube version, you're, gonna, you're always going to be focusing on that one target. But if you're playing on the Wii, you have to aim yourself. Which one's the better version, GameCube or Wii? GameCube. Mm, well, a lot of people will say GameCube because the controls are easier, but I honestly don't see too much of a difference once you get used to the controls. I do because I don't want to sit there and be shaking my arm fucking everywhere. It, it, it's not like playing Sonic. Well, then Sonic. get more vitamins in your system. It's not like playing Sonic in the uh, Black Knight. I, 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 we don't talk about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. Oh, already. dude, don't forget to scan this ship. We're going to try and scan right. as, as many things as possible. That's oh, my right. God, really? We're shooting yeah. for a 100% completion of this game. You won't, you will, I will try to collect items as best as I can as we go along. And uh, first, I'm going to show you what it means to scan. Once you scan something, uh, then you will see that it will turn, it has this little orange thing that will fade away. That's, that's a good thing. If something has faded away, that means you scan it, you don't need to scan it anymore. I thought it was supposed to be red. It's only red if it's either a key or a boss enemy. 
Like, for example, this one over here is red. Because this one, sh because you see, th this, these here are orange and this one's red. The red ones are the ones that are about, like, you know, keys and... Yeah, uh, red, ones are, red ones are key items. And boss enemies as well. Oh, yeah. Yellow ones are miscellaneous, but just because they're miscellaneous doesn't mean you shouldn't scan them, especially if they're, an, if, especially if they're uh, what's it called, an enemy. Because there are a lot of enemies in this game that, once you pass a certain point, they no longer respawn. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. So far, we're 10 minutes into this. We're gonna break it at 20, because I don't want the video going on for too long. Roger that, boss man. So, let's keep, let's keep talking about the game. So basically, at the intro, it's pretty simple. All you're doing is shooting these le these lights, turning them from red to uh, light blue, I think. I don't know. I don't know what that color is. Yeah, aqua. Oh, and if you see these meteorites, oh, you can actually shoot them out of the sky if you that's want. That's right. Uh, I didn't really realize that you could shoot them. I thought they were just uh, what do they call it? Just objects in passing. For those of you who uh, don't know too much about this game, let me just explain that this game looks like a first-person shooter, but it's not. First-person shooters are normally separated into different Stop. levels. Uh, I think you have to go back and scan. Scan what? Scan the this thing? Yeah. Nope. All it says is that there's an emergency going on. Oh, look, I wonder if it is an emergency because we got a, we got sent a distress beacon. Yeah. It mean, makes sense, doesn't it's, it? I know. How about that? Putting two and two together. Turn around, surprise butt sex. Not really. Turn around, surprise lizards in the air. Look at that. Well, those that's a lizard? That's not a lizard. That's a parasite. It's a really ugly parasite, too. Dude, that looks like an anglerfish mixed with a lobster. What the fuck is that? It's a parasite. That is not anyway, okay. so well, so basically the reason why we can't move forward is because the room isn't pressure. We're about to change that. Yeah, all you have to do is just scan the device with your visor. Exactly. If you're honestly stuck in a part in this game, sometimes all you have to do is scan something in order to figure out what's going on. And you always have to shoot a door to open it. Did you ever watch that video I sent you on Facebook? Um, yes, yes, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, good, good. We'll right. talk about that now, over you? Nah, I'd rather not. No, it's okay, we can, we can put it off. We'll talk, because I was thinking, you know, that has to do with another game. So, here we are in the frigate. You'll notice that this guy right here is a parasite. Oh, they have that recording to logbook voice? Because they didn't have it in the GameCube version. Not in the GameCube version, no. They put that in, in I believe, Prime 2, and, it's, and they put it in for all three versions of this game. Yeah. So basically, this is the first creature in the game. This is the parasite. It's indigenous to Talon 4, which is um, the planet that we're uh, orbiting ar around right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice, mega nice zero shirt, by the way. Oh well, thank you. I mean, the people at home can't see it, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let when this is over, I'll put, we'll put a link in the description so that they can find it. Uh, I'm gonna try and get a new mic, something that records people all around, because I think I have one of those mics that only records one person. But it's strange, though. We've done this with the Devil May Cry stuff. Oh, and by the way, it's nice to take a break from Devil May Cry to actually do a Let's Play on another series. As much as I like those games, I also have a passion for Metroid. Alright, so let me explain what's going on here in this frigate. These guys are the space pirates. Basically, in the Metroid series, you're on one of two sides. You're either with the pirates or you're with the Federation. And uh, if you're with the pirate, you're you're dicks because Samus is going to come and kill you. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and this guy had a pretty brutal death. He got impaled by this giant, whatever the hell this thing is. How the hell did that thing even get in the room? I don't know. Fell from the ceiling. This I don't know. Did it come from the ceiling? No, it doesn't look like anything. No, it looks like it came from that area over there where I'm shooting. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. So let's talk about shooting real quick in this game. In this game, you can tap the button to shoot with the power beam. You can also charge it up right here in the start. And uh, you let it go, it fires. Anyone who's played Super Smash Brothers will uh, be very well acquainted with that. <laughs> we'll talk about Samus and Smash Brothers a little bit later. So basically what's happening now is that, remember how I said earlier, is that if they were her friends, she would come to help them out, and if they were her enemies, she would be here to kill them. This guy is bleeding out. What are we going to do with him? He's an enemy. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. What? Oh. That. You're welcome. <laughs> And oh, wait. his body fades you away. You didn't finish. Oh. I don't. It's okay. We don't need to scan him right now because we're actually not going to get the, a fully powered space pilot in this place. It's kind of like the tutorial. Wait, wait. Isn't there another person to scan? Doesn't another? I know there's an, uh, no more of those enemies that come up, and you can just scan them. Yeah, before, they do. You, scan them before you shoot them. That's it. That's all you have to do. Yeah. I'll check that out. All right. So anyway. So those parasites are going in there. Uh, I think that's the map room. Yeah, I see the hologram. Never mind. There's spiders. Yep. 
And not only that, but here's the Morph Ball. To turn into the Morph Ball, it's pretty simple. GameCube version is the X button. If you're playing on the Wii, you're using a nunchuck. You can press the C button to do it. And you also press the C button again to get out. So, is this game like a remaster? Because I I, it's more than that. This game is just, uh, how should I put it? Oh yeah, you might want to scan uh, the map station because the, this is one of those scans that can go away if you don't scan a map station any time in the game. It sounds stupid, I know, but you can't scan it after you grab the map. And is this game a remaster? I mean, this game was released to commemorate the Prime series, and if I remember correctly, the specs on the GameCube and the specs on the Wii for graphics were about identical. So all they really did was probably fine tune it a little bit. It's just an HD remake. That's a, it's, it's not really. That, it's not really HD though. It's, we can't it's, it's, it's just. Wait, wait a minute! I just realized. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. It looks to be like a 16:9 ratio rather than four, four to three. Like there's no black bars. Yeah. So it does look HD, like yeah, you can scaled. Change, you, you can change that in the GameCube version. All right. So let me explain something about the maps. The map is divided into two kinds of different uh, rooms: the blue rooms and the orange rooms. Orange rooms are rooms you've already been to, like uh, this one right here. And uh, blue rooms are rooms that you haven't been to, but you can get, but you can be told later on in the game to be told where to go in order to progress the game. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know things, things of that nature. It also tells you also see a bunch of uh, colors on the left, but we'll talk more about those later. Yeah, I think we should spend less time like being on the menus and like looking into the scans because like the people watching this they could just pause like and read the scanning information oh i know that that's why i'm as, as we're as i'm scanning here i'm actually not uh i'm actually like going away from all the scanning information we're not uh seeing all of that i mean i stop with the parasite to give people an idea with they pause it to see what the parasite's information is about but for future scans i recommend people look at the wikia because um what's it called you know, this playthrough is going to be really boring and also kind of messed up if the, the controller decides to crap out on me. Give me just one quick second. Okay, we're back. I can give you my nunchuck if it's not good. No, it's not the nunchuck. It's just that it's something was up with the remote itself. Um, but like I said, uh, if you really... Oh, shoot. If you really want to see uh, the information for all these creatures and everything I'm scanning or I'm missing on scanning, Wait, the Metroid Wiki has all of this information. I just saw a green object. I don't know. If... Mm, oh, you mean this thing? It's oh, a light. Scan. Oh, it's a light. Yeah, it's just a light. Just a light. <laughs> if we have to scan for a light, I'm about to leave. I don't yeah. want to scan for a fucking light. All right, so let's scan this thing to figure out what it is. Morphology is unknown, so we still have no idea what the hell these things scan are. Scan the pirates before you kill them. Yeah. Well, like the, they... the thing is, is that I don't need to scan these pirates because they're dying. Yeah, but you scan. Does I know. It tell you what they it, it still has information. Yeah, though. it has. It information. has information on them. All right, but uh, what what's it called? See. Oh, look, and it shows like that. Yeah. And it shows when you just got shot. Both of its legs are broken. Right, okay. And you even want to scan these things. That, that'll help you heal. And they're part of your logbook, too. Yeah. Oh, my so. God. Fuck that. I would never do this game like that, ever. <laughs> I've done and it I twice. I get so better. bored. I've done it twice. I want action. I don't want to scan everything. Yeah, but that's how you get through the game. You read the story. The story Look, okay, comes in see, snippets. That's why, that's why, that's why freaking Arkham Origins did that, right? I'm doing it for the fucking detective work. I want to shoot shit. And then Arkham Knight redid it only well, once. Well, after a while, Manny, you reach a point where you all you're doing is shooting stuff. Yeah, but you're going to still scan new enemies every time you find it. Yeah. Well, you scan the first of the new kind of enemy that you see, and that's it. Oh, uh, scan it. Isn't that your missile rocket? That is a missile launcher thing missile right rocket. here. I'm such a retard. You press the Y button to shoot missiles on the GameCube version. If you're playing on the Wii version, you press down on the control pad. So here's another room with a whole bunch of different information. Um, all right, I'll, I'll go through that real quick. Okay. Oh, there's a red one. What, yeah, the red is one is uh, the red ones are important because there's a lot of lore that's captured in this game, and the lore actually tells the story. But as I go through the game, I'm gonna tell the story so you don't have to read it yourself. Well, isn't that what the game's supposed to be about? It's supposed to tell you for the story. Oh wait, this game doesn't have much uh, audio, does it? I mean, no. it doesn't have like much dialogue. No, this game has very limited dialogue, and there's dialogue in Prime Three and in Prime Two. Who very figured little this shit in Prime out in this first place? Huh? Tell me who figured out this shit in the first place, then. Who figured what shit out? If there's no... Okay, if there's no fucking audio, you know, you're probably playing... We are playing this game when we are like, freaking kids and shit. How the fuck did we figure this out? Oh, because the, the game tells you the story through the through the scan. Through the lores. Yeah, but how many of us really read when we were, like, fucking five? I did. I did. You read Radiator when you were five. You knew what that meant. At five years old. Don't you shit... Don't bullshit <laughs> me. Don't bullshit me. You didn't know what happened. these fucking... 
perma psycho freaking graph. How's the timer looking? Uh, we're almost and at the end of the first one, so all right, just I'll, more seconds. I'll scan him and then I'll scan him, and let's see here. Se- severe internal damage detected. That sounds like fun. All right, so as soon as I let go, I'm gonna pause the game. Okay. Uh, so far, good first episode. Indeed. Next time we continue our our trek through the space pirate on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> uh, you said that.